of a filly foal. And sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks against her lips, I bob, and on her withered dewlap, pour the ale! <laughs> <laughs> the wisest aunt, telling the saddest tale, sometime the three-foot stool mistaketh me. Then slip I from her bum, down topples she. <laughs> Those that hobgoblin call me and sweet puck, I do their work and they shall have good luck. Get you home, you merry lads. Tell your mammies and your dads and all those that news desire. How you saw a walking fire Away and to your houses go And they'll go laughing Ho, ho, ho Away and to your houses go And they'll go laughing Ho, ho, ho When she's that do smile and lisp Used to call me Willy Wisp If that you but weary be it is sport alone for me Away unto your houses go And I'll go laughing ho, ho, ho Away unto your houses go And I'll go laughing ho, ho, ho Wenches that do smile and lisp Used to call me Willy Wisp If that's that but weary and lisp Used to call me Willy Wisp If that's that but weary Wisp it is sport alone for me. It is sport alone for me. It is sport alone for me. The king doth keep his rebels here tonight. Take heed to Tania, come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she as her attendant hath the lovely boys. <laughs> <laughs> 
stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train to trace the forests wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. But Theseus and Hippolyta take rein, and to the forest swift must I refrain. Trip I off, but Puck shall return before that heavenly orb full turn. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. Four days shall quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights shall quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow now bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key with pomp with triumph and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast, by moonlight, at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness, and my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to please my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case, if I refuse to wed Demetrius, either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they that master sow their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthlier happy is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin thorn, grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, upon that day either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would. Relent, sweet Hermia! And Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scorn for Lysander. True, he hath my love. And what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine. 
and all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortune's every way as fairly ranked, <laughs> if not with vantage as Demetrius. And which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. For you, fair Hermia, Look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yield you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. <laughs> what cheer, my love? <coughs> Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire we follow you. How now, my love? <laughs> Why is your cheek so pale? What chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. Ay, me! For aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth, but either it were different in blood. Oh, cross too high to be enthralled to low. Or else Miss Grafford in respect of years. Oh, spite too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell to choose love by another's eyes. Or if there were a sympathy in choice, war, death or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound. Swift as a shadow, short as any dream, and ere man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. <laughs> Therefore, let us teach our trial patience. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by all the vows that ever men have broken, number more than ever women spoke, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God be fair, Helena, whither away. Call you me fair. Let fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are load stars. And your tongue, sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown on him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold a time that lovers' flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep words, Lysander. 
We must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. <laughs> How happy some our other some can be. <laughs> Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Love looks not with the eye, but with the mind, and therefore is wings stupid, painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyes, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally. Man by man, according to the script. Here is a scroll of every man's name who is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on. Then read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Marry, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Fisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry now. Good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Answer as I call you. Nick ready, Bottom, ready, the weaver. Ready! Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus, a lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for, love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms to the rest. Yet, my chief humour is for a tyrant. I could play a clairs rarely, or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. And Phoebus' car Phoebus. shall shine from far to make and mar the foolish fate. <laughs> this was lofty. Yes, yes, yes. Now name the rest of the players. This is a Claire's vein, a tyrant's vein, a lover is more condoling. No, 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 Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute. You must take Thisbe on you. And what is Thisbe? A wandering knight? Uh, it is the lady that Pyramus must love. No. Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard. Come in. <laughs> That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I will speak in a monstrous little voice. <laughs> Thisbe, Thisbe. Ah, Pyramus, my lover dear. Let this be dear and lady dear! No! No, you must play Pyramus and flute you, Thisbe. Well, proceed. Tom Snout the Tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, the lion's part! And here I hope to play well fitting. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you if it be giving me, for I'm slow of study. You may do it extempore. For it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. <laughs> I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. Roar! 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 Too terribly that you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That, that would hang us everybody. So but I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I 
will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and to any nightingale. Give a better pop, pop, Pyramus! For Pyramus is a sweet faced man, a proper man, such as one will see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman like man. Therefore, you must needs play, Pyramus. Well, I, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play? Why, what you will? But, masters, <laughs> here are your parts, and I must entreat you request you and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city we will be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet. And there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu! At the Duke's Oak we meet! Enough! Hold or cut bowstring! Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? I'll skip hence, I have forsworn your bed and company. Sorry, rash wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of Corin sat all day, playing on pipes of corn, versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? <coughs> Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night, and make him with fair eagles break his faith with Ariadne and Antiope? These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox, hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the ploughman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted, ere his youth attained a beard. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air, that rheumatic diseases do abound, and through this distemperature we see the seasons alter, hoary-headed frosts, fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old Hyam's thin and icy crown an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter, change their wonted liveries, and the mazed world, by their increase, now knows not which is which, and this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and originals. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order. Full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sand. But she, being mortal of that void, did die, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. 
Now I'll away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal, thrown in by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make all man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. Oh, I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? <laughs> Thou toldst me they were stone unto this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. And yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather do I not, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot, love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? Oh. I am your spaniel! And, Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, loose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor that this wood lack worlds of company for you in my respect to are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beast. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I will do thee mischief in the wood. Die in the temple, in the town, in the fields you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on our sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed. And we are not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell. To die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. I saw the flower there. Aye, there it is. I pray thee give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight, and with the juice of this. I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. 
Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. Come! <laughs> now a roundel and a fairy song, then for the third part of a minute hence. Some to kill cankers in the musk rose buds, some war with Reramis for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats, and some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. Sing me now asleep, then to your offices and let me rest. Rest, sweet nymphs, let golden sleep charm your star-brighter eyes. Whilst my lute the watch doth keep with pleasing sympathies. La 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 by, la la by, la la by. Sweet, 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 sweetly, let nothing affright ye. In calm contentment lie. La 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 by, la la by, la la by. Sleep sweetly, sleep sweetly, let nothing affright ye. In the calm contentment lie. What thou seest when thou dost wake? Do it for thy true love take, love and languish for his sake. Be it ounce or cat or bear, pard or boar with bristled hair in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood. And to speak truth, I have forgot our way. Oh. We'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander. Find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one trope. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Oh. Take the sense, sweet, in my innocence. <laughs> love takes the meaning in love's conference. Hmm. I mean that my heart unto yours it knit, so that but one heart we can make of it. Two bosoms interchanged with an oath, so then two bosoms and a single troth. Then by your side no bedroom me deny, for lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Lysander riddles very prettily. <laughs> now much beshrew my manners and my pride if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. So far be distant, and good night, sweet friend. Thy love never alter till thy sweet life end. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. <laughs> Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none, <laughs> on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force with stirring love. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despise of the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kale courtesy. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, 
Let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Nay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius! I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus! Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so! Stay! On thy peril I alone will go! Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase! The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace! Happy is Hermia! Wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, mine eyes are often washed than hers, no. No, I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me run away for fear, therefore no marvel though Demetrius do as a monster fly my presence thus. But who is here? Lysander, on the ground, dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire will I for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia, Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? <laughs> no, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are the worthier maid. <laughs> and touching now the point of human skill, Reason becomes the marshal to my will and leads me to your eyes, where I overlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve such scorn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never know, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye, but you must flout my insufficiency. Good troth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do in such disdainful manner me to woo. But fare you well. Perforce, I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. For as a surfeit of the sweetest things the deepest loathing to the stomach brings, or as the heresies that men do leave are hated most of those they did deceive, so thou, my surfeit and my heresy, of all be hated, but the most of me and all my powers address your love and might to honour Helen and to be her knight. Oh. Help me, Lysander, help me! Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast! Ay, me! For pity, what a dream was here! Lysander, look how I do quake with fear! Methought a serpent ate my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey! Lysander? What? Remove? Lysander! Lord! What, out of hearing? Gone. No sound? No word? No? Then I perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you I will find immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Away unto your houses go, and I'll go laughing, ho, ho, ho. Away unto your houses go, and I'll go laughing, ho, ho, ho. Wenches that do smile and lisp, used to call me Willy Wisp, if that you but weary me. It is sport alone for me away and to your house. And I'll go laughing.
Your houses go, and I'll go laughing, ho, ho, ho. When she's that do smile and list, you used to call me Willy Wisp. Is that you, but we are easy. Need to sport alone for me. Are we all met? Pat Pat! And a marvellous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This Hawthorne break, our tiring house, and we will do it in action as we will do before the Duke. Peter Quint, what sayest thou, bully bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, Ooh. which the ladies cannot abide. Ooh. How answer you that? By a lake in a parlour sphere! I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. I'm not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And, for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom, the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we shall have such a prologue, and it'll be written in eight and six. No, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters! You ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God's shield as a lion amongst ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell that he is not a lion. Nay, and you must name his name. And half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, ladies, or... Fair ladies, I would wish you all, I would request you all, I would entreat you not to tremble, not to fear my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there indeed, let him name his name and tell them plainly, he is Snout the Tinker. <laughs> well, it shall be so, but... There is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into the chamber. For, you know, Pyramus and Thisbe do meet by moonlight. Does the moon shine the night we play our play? The calendar! Look in the almanac! Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! Yes! It doth shine that night. Why? Then may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play our play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye. Or else. One must come in with a lantern and a bush of thorns and say he has come to disfigure or to present the person of moonshine. Oh. And then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyrrhus and Thisbe, says the story, do talk to the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. I won't say you, Bottom. Some man or other must present wall. <gasps> And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus. <laughs> and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit me down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. What <laughs> hemp and homespuns are we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? Pyramus, you begin. Once you've spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so every man according to his cue. What? A play toward? I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause? Speak, Pyramus, this may stand forth. This be the flowers of odious savours sweet. Odors. 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 So have thy breath. My dearest Thisbe, dear! Oh. But hark, a voice, stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear! A stranger, Pyramus, than e'er played here. Must I speak now? Aye, marry, must you. <laughs> For you must understand, he is gone but to see a noise that he has heard, and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus! Most lily white of hue, of colour like the red rose on triumph for bar. Most frisky juvenile and eat most lovely Jews. True, 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 never yet a time. Me the pyramids and these two. And Ninus, true. Me the pyramids and Ninus, too. You must not speak that yet. <laughs> that you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. 
Perimus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tire. Oh. oh. As true as truest host that never yet would tire. If I were so fair, please me, I were only thine. We are haunted. Oh, oh master, 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 drive us as hell. I'll follow you. I'll lead you about around to the bog, to the bush, to the brake, to the briar. Sometime a horse I'll be. Sometime a hound, a hog, a headless bear. Sometime a fire. And neigh and bark and grunt and roar and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Why do they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me afeard. What do you see? Do you see an ass head of your own, do you? I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, hm. to fright me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. <coughs> am so cock, so black of hue, with orange tawny bill, that the rustle with his notes so true, the wren with a little quill. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo grey, whose note full many a man doth mark and dares not answer nay. For indeed, ha, who would set his wits to so foolish a bird? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Ah! Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note. So is mine eye enthralling to thy shape, and thy fair virtues force for force doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Yet methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Ha! Nay, I can gleek upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art. Beautiful. Uh, not so neither, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peas blossom, cobweb, and mustard seed. Ready? And I. And I. Where, where, where shall, shall we, we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bag steal from the humble bees, and for night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes to have my love to bed and to arise. Eeyaw. Not to him, elves and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal, hail, hail! I beseech your worship's merci heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb! I desire you more acquaintance, good master Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, honest gentleman. Peas Blossom! I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother. And to Master Peas Cod, your father. I shall desire you of more acquaintance, good Master Peas Blossom. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard Seed! Oh, 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 good Master Mustard Seed, I know your patience well. Uh, that same cowardly giant like Oxbeef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I pray you, your kindred hath made mine eyes water ere now. I desire you more acquaintance, good Master Mustard Seed. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some 
enforced chastity. Please. Tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awaked. Then what it was the next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Oh, now, mad spirit, what night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love! Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her darling's sleeping hour. Her crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play <laughs> intended for great Theseus' nuptial day. The shallowest, thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break, when I did him at this advantage take. An ass's knoll, I fix it on his head. <laughs> Anon, his thisby must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy as wild geese that the creeping fowler eye sever themselves and madly sweep the sky, so at his sight away his fellows fly. I led them on in this distracted fear and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightaway laughed an ass. Oh, this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of force she must be I. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke oh. you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being gold shoes in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. Oh. God, the sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away? It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. Oh. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. Oh, so should the murdered look, and so should I. Pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty, yet you, the murderer, look as bright, oh. as clear as yonder oh. Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hound. Out, dog, out, cur! Thou drives me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for aught I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get therefore? A privilege never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. no, no. Oh, there is no following her in this fierce vein. Oh, here, therefore, for a while, I will remain. Oh. What hast thou done? Ah. Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love sight. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love turned and not a false turned true. About the wood go swifter than the wind and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go. Swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand. And the youth, mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee, shall we their fond pageant see, Lord? What fools these mortals be! Why? Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears! Look! When I vow, I weep, and vows so born in their nativity all truth appears! You do advance your cunning more and more! 
when truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray. These vows are Hermia's, will you give her o'er? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her o'er. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen! <laughs> Goddess! Nymph! Perfect, divine! To what my love shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy! Oh, how ripen show thy lips! Those kissing cherries, tempting, grow! Oh, spite! Oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment! Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls to mock me too! If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so! You both are rivals and love Hermia! And now both rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit! A manly enterprise to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia. This you know I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part and yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love. And will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guestwise sojourned, and now to Helen is it home returned, there to remain. Helen! It is not so. <laughs> Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou are by it, dear. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found, mine ear I thank it brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love, that would not let him bide. Fair Helen. Who more engilds the night than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light? You speak not as you think it cannot be. No, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Oh. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face and made your other love Demetrius, who even but now did burn me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, perfect, divine, precious, <laughs> celestial. <laughs> wherefore speak to you, sir, he hates me. And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul and tender me forsooth affection, but by your setting on, by your consent. I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other. Hold the sweet jest up. If you have any pity, grace or manners, you would not make me such an argument. <laughs> Stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do uh, not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreats. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Uh, Helen, I love you. By my life I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. Well, if thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where to tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou burr. Vile thing let loose or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this sweet love? I love! <gasps> out, tawny tartar, out. Out, loathed medicine. Oh, hated potion, hen. Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What, shall I hurt her? Strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me, what news, my love? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me, 
Why then, you left me, oh, the gods forbid, in earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What, have you come by night and stolen oh, my love's heart from him? Fine if faith, have you no modesty, oh. no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? <laughs> fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you <laughs> puppet! Why so? Aye, that way goes the game. Now I perceive she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height. And with her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? <gasps> Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Yes. Oh, I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Oh. Let her not strike me. <laughs> you perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower? Hark again! Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I ever more did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius. I taught him of your stealth unto this wood. <gasps> he followed you. For love I followed him, but he hath chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, or spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go, to Athens will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius! <sighs> Be not afeard, oh. she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, no. sir, she shall not, though you take her part. No, when she's angry, she's keen and shrewd. Oh. She was a fixin when she went to school. And though she be but little, she is fair. Little again! <laughs> Nothing but low and little. Will you suffer her to flounce me thus? Let me come to her. <laughs> Get you gone, you dwarf. You villainous of hindering, not grass maid. You bean, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try who's right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow. Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek. By jowl. You, mistress, all this coil is wrong of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. Oh. I am amazed I know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest. Or else commits thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, king of shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes. The starry welkin cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron and leave these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. Like to Lysander, sometime frame thy tongue, then stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometime rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then brush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property, to take from thence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with wonted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision, and back to Athens shall the lovers wend, with league whose date till death shall never end. Was I in this affair do thee employ? I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace.
Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a 15 minute interval. Thank you very much. And your dads, and all those that knew thee, sire, how you saw a walking fire away unto your houses go, and I'll go laughing, ho, 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 away unto your houses go, and I'll go laughing, ho, 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 up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down, I am feared in field and town, goblin lead them up and down, here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then, to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward art thou fled. Speak, ho, in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars? Telling the bushes that thou looks for warmth and wilt not come. Come, recreant! Come, thou child! Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice, for try no manhood here. Oh! He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter heeled than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly, that fallen am I in this dark, uneven way. And here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy grey light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? <sighs> Abide me if thou darest, for well I wot thou runst before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, neither thou mockst me. Thou shalt abide this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on a cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Oh, weary night! Oh, long and tedious night, abate thy hours! Shine comforts from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight from these that my poor company detest. And sleep, that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes, steal me a while from mine own company. Yet but three. Come, one more, two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary, never so in woe, or bedabbled with the dew and torn with the briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Near will I rest me till break of day. Heavens, shield Lysander if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takes true delight of thy former lady's sight, and the country proverb known that every man should take his own. In your waking shall be shown, Jack, shall have Jill, naught shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Eeyore. Eeyore. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed while I thy 
amiable cheeks do coy and stick musk roses in thy sleek smooth head and kiss thy fair large ears my gentle joy where's peas blossom ready scratch my head peas blossom where's monsieur cobweb ready ah! Monsieur Cobweb, bien monsieur, get you your weapons in your hand and kill me a red-hipped humble bee on the top of a thistle. And, good monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much in the action, monsieur. And, good monsieur, have a care the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with a honey bag, senor. Where's Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready! <gasps> Give me your knife! Monsieur Mustard Seed, I pray you leave your curtsy, good monsieur. What's your will? Well, nothing, good monsieur, but to help Cavalry Cobweb to scratch up. Oh, 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 I must to the barbers, monsieur, for methinks I am marvellous hairy about the face. <laughs> <laughs> and I am such a tender ass. Oh, if my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch up. Oh, oh. What, wilt thou have some music, my sweet love? Oh, I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongues and the bones. Oh, oh say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Oh, truly a peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay! Sweet hay hath no fellow oh, I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. Well, I had rather have a handful or two of your dried peas, but I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Oh, sleep thou! And I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, oh. and be always away. Me. So doth the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle, gently entwist. The female ivy so enrings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity, for meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favours from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For she, his hairy temples then, had rounded with coronets of fresh and fragrant flowers, when I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience, I then did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairy land. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes, and gentle Puck, Take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the other do, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou was wont to be. See as thou was wont to see. Dime's bud o'er Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamoured of an ass. <laughs> there lies your love. Oh, how came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Now when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes, peep. 
Music, hope. Music such as charm is sleep. Song, music. Come, my queen. Take hands with me and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. And will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly and bless it for all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. For now our observation is performed, and since we have the ballad of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley, let them go. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top, and mark the musical confusion of hounds and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once, when in a wood of Crete they bade the bear with hounds of Sparta. Never did I hear such gallant chiding, for besides the groves, the skies, the fountains, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard so musical a discord, such sweet thunder. My hounds are bred out of the Spartan kind, so flued. So sanded, and their heads are hung with ears that sweep away the morning dew, crook kneed and dew lapped like Thessalian bulls. Tomorrow, friends, St. Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds but to couple now? But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is. My lord, I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy to kneel by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half wake, half sleeping. But as yet I swear, 
I cannot truly say how I came here, but as I think, for truly would I speak. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough! Enough, my lord, you have enough! I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away. They would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife, and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, and I in fury hither followed them. Fair Helena in fancy following me, but my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow seems to me now as the remembrance of an idle gourd and all the faith the virtue of my heart is only Helena to her, my lord, was I betrothed, ere I saw Hermia, but like in sickness I did loathe this food. But as in health, come to my natural taste, now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we more will hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will, for in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning is now something warm. Our purposed hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens. Three and three will hold a feast in great solemnity. These things seem small and undistinguishable, like far-off mountains turned into clouds. Methinks I see things with parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks, and I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own, and not mine own. Are you sure we are awake? <laughs> it seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. <laughs> and Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow him, and by the way, let us recount our dreams. Tis strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies, that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold. That is, the madman. The lover, all as frantic, sees Helen's beauty in a brow of Egypt. The poet's eye, in a fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. And as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesseth than fancies images, and grows to something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Such tricks hath strong imagination. Come, Hippolyta. <laughs> when my cue comes, call me and I will answer. My next is most fair Pyramus. Hey ho! Peter Quint! <laughs> Flute the bellows, Mender! Snout the tinker? Got my life. Stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most <laughs> rare vision. I've had a dream. Past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Methought I was, there is no man can tell what. Uh, methought I was, and methought I had. 
But man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom, and I will sing it in the latter end of the play before the Duke peradventure to make it the more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. Have you sent what? to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Uh, if though he is transported, if he come not, the play is marred, it goes not forward. Doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. No, he had simply the best wit of any handicraft man in Athens. Yeah, and the best person too. And he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon, for a paramour is, God bless us, a thing of noise. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there are two or three lords and ladies more married. If our sport had gone forward, we'd have all been made men. Oh, sweet bully bottom! And the Duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus, I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Sixpence a day in Pyramus or nothing. Where are these hearts? Where are these lads? <laughs> Bottom? <gasps> oh, most courageous day! Oh, most happy hour! Versus, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what, for if I tell you I am no true Athenian. I will tell you everything, right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word from me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath died. Get your apparel together. Good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look o'er his part. For the short and the long is, our play is preferred. <laughs> In any case, let this be have clean linen. And let not him that plays the lion tear his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. And most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say it is a sweet comedy. Preach. No more words. Away! Go! Away! Come now. Masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? Here, Marty Theseus. Hmm, what revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? There is a brief how many sports are ripe. Make choice of which your highness shall see first. The Battle of the Centaurs, to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the harp. Well, none of that. The riot of the tipsy bacchanals, tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. That is an old device. The thrice three muses, mourning for the death of learning, late deceased in beggary. That is some satire, keen and critical, not sorting with a nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. Well, that is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my noble lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play there is not one word apt, one player fitted, and tragical, my noble lord, it is. Uh, what are they that do play it? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never laboured in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No. <laughs> My noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world. Unless you can find sport in their intents, 
extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in. I love not to see wretchedness o'ercharged and duty in his service perishing. My gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake. And what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, not merit. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will <laughs> to show our simple skill. That is the true beginning of our end. Consider then, we come but in despite. We do not come as minding to content you, our true intent is all for your delight we are not here <laughs> that you should here repent you the actors are at hand and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know this fellow doth not stand upon points he hath rid his prologue like a rough colt he knows not the stop indeed he has played on his prologue like a child on a recorder a sound but not in government <laughs> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you will know. This beauteous lady, Fisby, is certain. This man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall. That vile wall which did these love asunder and through walls chink, poor souls, are they content to whisper? At the which, let no man wonder. This man, with lantern, dog, and bush of thorns, presenteth moonshine. For if you'll know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus' tomb, there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Fisby, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather, did affright, and as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. A non champed Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broke his boiling bloody breast. And Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. Ah. For all the rest, let lion moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord. One lion may when many asses do. <laughs> In this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snap by name, Present a wall! <laughs> and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a crannied hole or chink through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this the cranny is, both right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? It is the wittiest partition I ever heard discourse. Oh, oh, oh grim looked knight, O oh, knight with hue so black, O oh, knight whichever art when day is not, I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot, and thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, ho, ho, that stands between her father's ground and mine, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. <laughs> Thanks, courteous wall. Jove, shield thee well for this. 
But what see I? <laughs> no Thisbe do I see. O oh, wicked wall through whom I see no bliss. Oh, cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is this beast Q. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You will see, it will fall pat, as I told you, yonder she comes. Ah! <laughs> Full of ten hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My sherry lips have of ten kissed thy stones. Thy stones with lime and hair near up in thee. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love! Thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace. Who oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Who oh, wilt thou at... <laughs> wilt thou at Nini's tomb meet me straight away? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I, wall, my part discharged so, and being done thus wall away, doth go. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. <laughs> the best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination amend them. It must be your imagination then, and not theirs. If we think no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. But here come two noble beasts, and a man and a lion. You, ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. Then know that I, as snout the tinker, am no lion's fell, nor else no lion's dam. For if I should as lion come in strife into this place, to a pity on my life. A very noble beast and of a good conscience. The very best at beast that e'er I saw. <laughs> This lantern doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns upon his head. This lantern doth the horned moon present. I, the man in the moon, doth seem to be. I am a weary of this moon. Would he would change. It appears by his small light of discretion that he is in the wane. But yet in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon. <laughs> I, the man in the moon, and this thorn bush, my thorn bush. <laughs> this is old Ninny's Tyrannus! Where is my love? <laughs> well roared, lion! Well run, Thisbe! Well shone, moon! Truly the moon shines with a good grace. Oh, well, moused lion. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams, for by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest Thisbe's sight. <laughs> but stay, who oh, spite, what dreadful dole is here? How can it be, O oh, dainty duck? O oh, dear, thy mantle, good. What? Stained with blood? <laughs> Approach ye furies fell! Oh, fate, come, come, cut thread and thrum! Quail, crush, conclude and quell! This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. And beshrew my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lions frame? Since lion. Vile hath here deflowered, my dear, which is, no, no, which was <laughs> the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, 
tears confound, out sword and wound the pep of Pyramus, aye, the left pep where the heart doth hop, thus die I. Thus. Thus, ah, now am I dead, now am I fled, my soul is in the sky, tongue, lose thy light, moon, take thy flight, now die, 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 die. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover. <laughs> How chance moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes. Asleep, my love? What? Dead? Oh, my dove! Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak! <laughs> Speak! Quite dumb. Dead. Dead! A tomb I must cover thy sweet eyes, these lily lips, this serene nose, <laughs> these yellow curled slip cheeks are gone. Oh, God! <laughs> Lovers make moan, his eyes were green as leeks. Oh, sisters three, come. Come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore, <laughs> since you have sure. <laughs> With shears, his freed of silk. <laughs> Tunge, not a word. Come, trusty sword. <laughs> Come, blade. My breast in proof. And farewell, friends. Thus this be end. Adieu. 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 <laughs> Moonshine and lion are left to bury the dead. I and wall, too. No, no. I assure you, the wall is down that parted their fathers. Would it please you to see the epilogue or to hear a Bergamask dance between two of our company? Uh, no epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Never excuse, for when all the players are dead, there needs none to be blamed, and so it is truly and very notably discharged. Feel we should outsleep the coming morn as much as we this night have overwatched. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. The iron tongue of midnight hath told twelve. All now to bed. Tis almost fairy time. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy ploughman snores, all with weary task for done. Now the wasted brands do glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night, that the graves all gaping wide, every one lets forth his sprite in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team for the presence of the sun, following darkness like a dream, now are frolic! Not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through the house give glimmering light by the dead and drowsy fire. 
Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar, and this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. Hand in hand with fairy grace, will we sing and bless this place. Bella Kitia Maria, Captiva Dantes Ye, Kima La Maravilla, Dansur Ye Gracia, Viantum Securir, Uma Podra Morir, Viantum Securir, Uma Podra now, until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray. To the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create, ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three, ever true in loving be. With this field due consecrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend, if you pardon we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have an honest luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, or else the puck a liar call. So good night, and to you all, give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Pluto on bella londa, contremoreculae,